everyone, welcome to the fabulous Bell Leader Room, celebrating 25 years of live stand-up comedy. Tonight we are saying farewell to the Bell Leader Room's 10-year manager, booker, bartender, Mr. Dana Smith. Let him hear it. We've got a big list of funny, funny people coming up to sling some shit day his way. Let's get things started with your host, MC, and roast master, Mr. J.R. Brown! Thank you guys so much. Thank you, Mario. How about a round of applause one time for our future, future uh, former Velveeta manager. Give it up one time for Mario. There's Giorgio in the back. I, uh... We do have a long list of comics tonight, so Dana, I just want to tell you uh, right off the bat, Dana Smith is sitting right here. This is our uh, this is our man of the hour. You know, apparently it started out as ten people wanted to fuck with you, and now uh, everybody in in the fucking community is getting in line to do so. So just you know, take it all. Uh, we're the grain of salt. We love you and we hate you. That's really the message we're trying to give you here. You know, there have been very, there have been many Velveeta Room managers over the years, but none like Dana. Most leave here to go on to better things. Thank you. Could you please sit in the chair that you brought? <laughs> this is actually his dining room chair, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Most management here at Velveeta go on to better things. Dana is leaving to sell irrigation pumps. Um, <laughs> So he's going from a place, imagine going from a place where people talk shit to a place where people pipe it. I uh, thought that would be funnier. <laughs> also, Dana will be pursuing comedy again more aggressively and uh, don't let his set fool you. He is funny. I, uh, <laughs> my favorite joke of Dana's is the one, the, the one where he, uh, he says that, you know, that, where he starts... Let's face it, they're all golden. I mean, <laughs> to Dana, apparently. Uh, I'm, I'm your roast master, J.R. Brow, and, and I don't want to uh, take too much time because we have so many people coming up and so many wonderful comics with great things and uh, not so great things to say about our man of the hour. So I'd like to bring up our first uh, guest roasty, roaster tonight. Uh, now, the first thing you might think when you see this person is, oh my God, she is so hot. Right? And then, after you stop looking at her chest, you will think, oh my God, she also has a brain when she starts talking. And you'll think, is she from Russia? Like, where's that accent? And then the more she talks, you're like, no, that's more like Minnesota. But really, somebody who single-handedly brought life back into this once empty room, somehow, someone who knows firsthand how to revive a dead horse known as the Velveeta Room. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the mother of my childhood dreams, <laughs> Summer Brow. Told you. <laughs> I really wish it had rained, honestly. Um, so, I'm, I've got notes, I'm not a comic, I'm going to keep my time short, because there are far funnier people who can talk about Dana's failed comedy career. Um, <laughs> there are acts coming up later who can make the bizarre and wildly inappropriate arguments Dana had with his ex-girlfriend during shows something to actually laugh about. <laughs> No, 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 no. I'm, I'm not going to talk about watered-down drinks or a complete lack of interest in the comedy industry. <laughs> Much less the shows on this stage. I'm going to talk about something that Dana and JR and, and uh, JC and I share. It's a, a rare experience to actually run the Velveeta Room. Um, many of you don't know this or care. But uh, JR and I met at the Velveeta Room in the late 90s, so this club, woo! Woo! Yeah! it does, it holds a special place in our hearts. Um, we took over management and booking of Velveeta back in 2003. Oof. It wasn't actually the Velveeta Room at the time. It had gone through this metamorphosis and had resurrected as the club known as Funnies. <laughs> 
<laughs> now, for those of you who don't know, Funnies was a family-friendly club. <laughs> it seated approximately 12 people, I don't, I don't know, um, at $15 a pop. Um, and the club was a roaring success for an entire three and a half weeks. <laughs> and uh, then the doors closed. So um, it took JR and myself, uh, or JR and I, a full year to rebuild the reputation of this club that we hold so dearly. JR by booking reputable acts, and me by running the bar and making note of up and coming comics. Um, when we handed over the keys of the kingdom to Mr. Dana Smith. Yeah. We were actually really proud of what we'd done and had faith in the long life of the Velveeta Room. And fast forward nearly a decade, and here we are. Wow, yeah, a decade. In his 10 year tenure, 10 year tenure, that's, that's sort of fun to say, 10 year tenure, say that fast full time. Um, Dana surpassed all my expectations, which were admittedly low. Um, <laughs> No, he, he did. He, he exceeded all my expectations of a comedy club manager. Uh, I say this from my heart. Um, but he ran this club, and he ran it well. And uh, as, as he says farewell to all of us, he does so with the accomplishment of almost, almost getting the club back to the state and renown and sheer entertainment level of funnies. <laughs> It's gonna get worse. How about a hand one time for Summer? Oh, give it up one time. Summer walking down the main stage. Now this next comic, uh, Roaster, when I first went up at the Velveeta Room back in 1990, I met and made instant friends with this guy, and there's a gay photo to prove it. He was tearing up the local comedy circuit. I mean, he, he started doing shows all over the place, from Oklahoma City to San Marcos to New Braunfels, <laughs> Dallas, Waco, you name it. I mean, ironically, he never did comedy uh, anywhere that I-35 wouldn't take him. Uh, <laughs> it is a pleasure and an honor to uh, introduce our next roaster. He is the only person in the room that can claim the title of having taught more comedy defensive driving classes than Dana Smith. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Austin's very first professional open micer, Mr. Howard Beecher. <laughs> Thank you guys for coming out. Uh, I, I just want to say that uh, you guys, a lot of you guys know me that I'm not the, uh, the greatest writer. Uh, that's not a joke, fucker, okay? <laughs> the fuck, man? You fucking Jesus motherfucker. Anyway, and, no, I mean, I, I, I mean I'm, I'm one of the few comics that uh, will do the same act year after year, um, not unlike your favorite Doobie Brothers album. And... <laughs> Uh, for you kids, that was a band uh, in in the past. Okay, uh, no, but you know what? Uh, I I've also burned a lot of bridges here in this city. Okay, maybe I shouldn't have told Margie she was a fucking cunt. Okay, maybe that was a mistake. You know, and uh, and I you know so consequently you know because. Uh, I don't like traveling, so if I wanted to be a stand-up comic, I, uh, you know, I would, I, I had to be nice to, to, to Dana, and, uh, and so I'm not here to, to, to roast Dana, because uh, that would be foolish, you know, because he was so nice to me, the only one, and I mean the only one, and I, as soon as I get off stage, I'm gonna spit in every one of your motherfucking faces. <laughs> Fuck you, people. Okay, seriously, I do not like comics. I don't like people that go to comedy shows or that fuck comics or that come to the fuck you people, okay? Seriously, I really mean that. So, uh, I'm not here to, to dog you, okay? I mean, uh, man, you, you got a shiny head. You know that? You're like a smooth Klingon, you know what I mean? I'm not here to say 
that this guy is like a black hole of comedy, okay? <laughs> that he's on the event horizon of mirth, okay? That, that if he says a joke, it just gets sucked into that hole, it gets all stringy, and time stands still. <laughs> I'm not say I'm not gonna say that. Why? Because I I, I I prize what you did for me. I'm not gonna say that if his if his act was uh, on an EKG, it'd be a flatliner. You know what I'm saying? He'd be like, clear. Oh, that's m that's me. Okay, it's not him. Okay, do you see how I, how I had him and then it died? That's your whole act. I could have kept him going the whole time. I've been doing this long enough. Okay, but. Uh, why are you fucking taking notes? No, fuck you, okay? Fuck you. It's all my heart, motherfucker. What, do you think you look cool in black and that it slims you? That the, you that... <laughs> this is dark brown. Fuck you, okay? <laughs> That's my time. Thanks. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Howard Beecher. And that marks the first time he kept on his time. Ladies and gentlemen, we, yeah, this, we got a little change up. Uh, this guy has to drive a long ways. I think he has to at least make it to uh, McNeil in the 183. So let me bring him up. Uh, and this is quite an honor for me. Oh, shit, I don't have anything about him. Where did it go? Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about the king of comedy here. We're talking about the original comedian in Austin, Texas, to me. In, in my opinion, uh, this, this room is named after his character that he wrote over here at Esther's Follies, Ronnie Velveeta. And uh, it's true. It's true. And let me tell you this. Uh, well, when they, when, and then he retired from Esther's Follies now to focus on his painting and his music. And he's just one of the most creative guys you'll ever meet. And upon his retirement, the owners had considered changing the name of the place from the Velveeta Room to the, uh, the Amazing Ray Anderson Room. But, uh... I knew I'd get Dana at least tonight. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome one of my mentors, one of my favorite people on the planet. Carry on! Thank you, kid. You know, J.R. Brow, uh, I remember the, we did a roast for J.R. Brow when he was moving to L.A. when he had his first wife. <laughs> and uh, everybody was there. We all knew he was, you know, with Summer, but he was with his wife, so we had to like, kind of squirt around when we were doing the roast. <laughs> remember that? <laughs> and then J.R. moved to L.A., and then he moved back, like they oftentimes do. And then uh, then we did another roast when he moved to New York. And then he, then he moved back. And then we did a roast when he moved to Cedar Park. <laughs> and now he lives by that bus stop on Red River. <laughs> but this is not about J.R. Brown, although he thinks everything always is, of course. <laughs> this is about Dana Brown, Smith, Dana Smith. <laughs> I never could remember your name. I knew it was Smith, Brown, Jones, something. But he's, of course, Dana Smith from the famous Smith family from Beaumont. <laughs> Y'all have heard of them. They uh, invented garage sales, I believe. <laughs> but we're here because we're trying to help Dana out because he's obviously doing chemo. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> He doesn't have cancer. He didn't want to tell y'all, like, go around and tell everybody that he has cancer. He's not like Sam Cox. So he's... No, wait a minute! Maybe he doesn't have it anymore. I don't really know. Nancy Reed lost cancer. She, her daughter just rubbed some crystals and they went away. I think it's the government's fault, too. She'll tell you. But Dana has been, he was a manager for 11 years, and so that's kind of sad right there. That 
He had, for 11 years, he had to put up with Matt Kordowski and Mars and all those guys. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're funny. Go on up, Matt, you know. Putting up with that damn pedicab sweat. But, uh... <laughs> I didn't know we could bring notes up. That's cheating, Summer. But dang, this is the most I've ever seen you laugh in your fucking life. You're happy because you're leaving, aren't you? <laughs> but I used to work at Esther's Follies before I got into comedy. Um, I had a mortgage payment. Fuck you, people. That's the closer over there. But, uh, now magic. You people are jealous. So anyway, I worked at Esther's Follies for a number of years, and Dana came over and he was a manager, and uh, they would be doing their medley and all their song and dance shit over there, and I'd be over here eating dinner every night. I'd be over here, me and Dana and Michael Parker would be over here hanging out for about an hour before Esther's show, and I got to know him pretty, well, about as well as you could get to know a fuck asshole. You know, <laughs> nobody really knows you. You don't have any friends, admit it. Not even on Facebook, you never post or anything. You're like one of those stalkers on Facebook, and that's how you found your girlfriend. <laughs> that, well, we won't go into that part about her. She's, but no, I never did fuck her. Uh, I wanted to. Well, I think we all wanted to fuck the least, you know what I mean? I did French kiss her once. Uh, maybe I should say I Dan French kissed her once. Uh, well, I didn't fuck her. I wanted to. All her entire family. <sighs> but Dana... Don't tell me you didn't have thoughts in your life. Teenage, pre-teenage girls running around in underwear in the house. Oh, Dana. Anyway, I got to go in a second. Uh, the reason I went up first, I got to go about a spice wood. Uh, I can't stay up this late. But Dana is, uh, he's getting out of comedy. He's getting into water because he knows water. He's been watering your drinks down all these years. That's why I always drink bottled beer here. It's hard to water those down. But here's a true story. Uh, I don't have many stories about him because he didn't really let anybody into his life. <laughs> it's kind of a bitter old washed up home, defensive driving dude. No, really, you're go no, you're a good man, and I really do love you, and you know that, Dana. But here's the funny part. I'm gonna close on this part. Dana, me and Michael Park, Michael Park, I've known that guy forever, but uh we would sit here and we would talk, and what we would talk about was the weather. Believe it or not, we're like old men talking about the weather. And be like, Michael, how much rain did you get out there at Oak Hill today? How much rain did you get at Spicewood? Do we be talking about the rain all the time? How much rain you got? And Dana would be all over the corner, like, <laughs> waiting to see if he got a text from Solis. But anyway, he'd be all pissed off. And when I said, Dana, you need to get you a rain gauge. So one time, I went out to Lowe's and I bought him a Christmas present and I bought him a rain gauge so he could put it up and measure the rain and talk about the rain. So uh, be like, hang out with me and Michael Park and be a buddy with us. So we made, me and Michael Park made a big deal about giving Dana a rain gauge. And then a couple months later, there was a bigger rain event. And so I go, Dana, how much rain did you get? He goes, oh, I don't want to talk about it. I go, well, really, didn't you put that rain gauge out? And he goes, I don't know how to work it. <laughs> how do you work it? <laughs> it's a fucking rain gauge. It's like a test tube that fa water falls in and you look at it and it goes, oh, I got three quarters of an inch. And now you're in fucking water. <laughs> I feel like I set you on your career path. <laughs> Thank you very much, Jay O'Brien. Carry on, ladies and gentlemen. 
Hopefully you forgot about that thing about me and Summer by now. Carry on. Holy shit. And you know, that's he's a smart comic. He's one of the smartest comics I know. A smart comic knows he's going to burn three other comics' uh, time uh, going up doing 15 minutes. That's good. That's good. That's good.